spider webs in there, got a bit of rust. That wasn't a good idea. Now I know it's been a while since the R36 has been on the channel and yes I know that could be applied to all the other stuff judging by my recent upload schedule but anyway we're getting back into it today so let's do a quick recap. So I got the car from BCA auction early in the year it was a bit of an impulsive bid as we figured because it had no MOT and the mileage was pretty high it could potentially go cheap. Well it did I paid just under £6,000 and as far as blue R36 estates go you rarely see these things dip below the 10k mark. Naturally of course it is a bit rough around the edges but it does drive well so I decided at least for now anyway that we'll take more of a rest to route with the build as opposed to just modifying it straight at the bat there's not really much you can do with a naturally aspirated vr6 anyway unless you're spending five figures on a turbo kit but we'll revisit that topic in the future in the intro video i gave the car an oil change and also tried remedying the chain rattle that it has on a cold start with the help of a new upper tensioner this actually ended up making it worse so i threw the old one back in until we do the complete timing chain job and in the previous restoration part one video i addressed the oil leak in the engine bay with the new rocker cover gasket and for good measure i chucked in a new set of spark plugs you may also remember that there was a bunch of suspension arms that I got off eBay. The goal of these was to just tighten up the car as most of the bushes were looking pretty tired at this point and they were actually advisories on the prior year MOT. I fit in most of the front components but I decided to postpone the items for the rear and this was due to there being quite a bit of surface rust on the subframe and the chassis and with this being a restoration project it just wouldn't make sense to do a half measure essentially. Now all of this neatly brings us onto the plan for today's video and that's to drop that whole rusty looking rear end onto a workbench and just get it all disassembled. But before we get stuck into all of that exciting and stuff i'd like to take a minute to thank today's video sponsor car vertical now if you're not already familiar with car vertical it's a website that allows you to obtain a full vehicle check on any car all you've got to do is enter registration or the vin now just in case you're wondering how all of this works we're going to take a look at an example report on this audi s5 right so at the top of the report you're essentially given a snapshot of the vehicle you searched for so in the case of this audi s5 we've got no problems with any previous theft it also says that the mileage has never been tampered with the financial legal status has come back all clear as well but unfortunately it does have a little marker next to the damage icon so it tells us that it was recorded as an insurance write-off specifically a category s which means structural damage the incident occurred in february 2020 and if we head over to the photo section it shows the extent of the damage yep that's not a pretty sight at all that's quite an extensive knock at the front the rear of the car somehow looks immaculate though it's like two different things joined together tier is pretty nice as well you can tell this thing was looked after but of course the airbags have gone off pretty low mileage as well only 25,000. explains the condition of it apart from the accident of course right so that's car vertical nice and straightforward i've been using it for a number of years now before picking up a new project car for the channel as a lot of the times i'm buying them sight and scenes so i don't really know what to expect so at least with one of these reports you're in a bit of a better position now they have given me my own special link which is down below in the description if you click on that and then use the code trh what that'll do is it'll save you 10 percent off your next report but yeah as always big thanks to car vertical for their continued support of the channel enjoy this two month cold start on an r36 There's nothing quite like the side of a VR6, even totally standard, they're just amazing. Started up first time as well, with no real issues, provided you have the jump cables on there. I've got one of them battery packs, but it doesn't work too well on this for some reason. A few random bits in here, there's a marker, our spoiler. But other than that, it's pretty much exactly as you last saw it in part one. In terms of where it's parked, there's no oil leaks, but I have noticed this over here, which looks to be coolant. That's pretty much all it can be, judging by the colour and the location of it, in respect of where the reservoir is. It's not enough to throw up a low coolant sign, but obviously we'll investigate it in any case. It's also got a full-size spare, exactly like that Ammonite wheel design there in the boot floor, so we should be okay. Now, before we begin tearing this thing apart, let's have a quick walk around and just re-familiarize ourselves because we might have missed some stuff in the previous video. Obviously, the main topic for today is to drop this rear subframe, which you can see straight away. There's quite a bit of rust on there, so you can see my logic behind doing this. This is the main bit on the sill that I noticed in the prior inspections. It's on both sides, so I imagine something's going on behind that side skirt and maybe even that carpet arch liner. I'm not a fan of carpet arch liners. I feel like they just hold all the muck and they just get soggy. And Now, interestingly enough, the exhaust doesn't look too bad. It's actually got less rust than the subframe. Decent clamp there as well. Hopefully that doesn't need cutting off because it looks in pretty good condition. We've also got to remember that there's a prop shaft above the exhaust there obviously because this car has got a Haldex system here so that is going to come off with the whole assembly. Right so I think we're all up to speed now. There's a bit of a recap for myself as well because I haven't had a look at this since the last video either. We've been focused on the caddy which is just out there. 
But yeah, let's get the shutter down and get to work. Right, so the process of removing a rusty R36 rear end isn't actually that complicated. A lot of the stuff stays attached to the subframe itself and you mainly need to focus on what's going into the body of the car. Trouble is, it was my first time attempting a job like this and I didn't fancy a whole VW Passat tipping over when the last bolt came out. Anyway, you gotta start with the basic stuff. Remove the arch liners, I held it with torque screws. Some resembled a T25, whereas others were compromised and required a little nudge from the Dremel. <laughs> All I can say is this looks like a haunted house when you first open the doors after like 20 years. Then you've got the exhaust which is naturally in the way. I know I said the clamp looked in good condition but I never mentioned anything about those two bolts holding it in place. So as you can see you needed a bit of persuasion. There we go. We'll get a new knot and bolt for this. That wasn't a good idea. For the rest of the cap back, I just opted to unbolt the brackets directly rather than faffing about with the rubber hangers. And yes, that is a shelf hole to give everything up, but you gotta do what you gotta do. All right, mate, you got a minute. Here we go. Once that's done, there's a clear view of the prop shaft, which needs disconnecting from the differential. There's three 10 millimeter bolts, but they're the 12 point variant. And I opted to use a ratchet to help spin it around each time before impact gutting them out, of course. Now, in addition to all of these bolts and screws, there's a number of wires you need to disconnect, such as the one going into the Haldex unit, the electric handbrake motors on either caliper, and both the brake pad level sensors and also the headlight level sensor on the subframe. Next, it's time for the messy bit, and that's the brake lines. I realized afterwards that you don't actually need to touch the driver's side as the main hard pipe routes along the subframe itself, and it's actually the two connections by the passenger side brake caliper that need undoing. In typical fashion, one of them snapped with basically no force, so that's another thing added to the list to fix. Next, we're just going to do the shocks for both sides so there's two bolts luckily on most of these vw's you'd have to go inside the car this thing's an absolute beast right so this is a trailing arm it's attached onto the body with one two three four looks like a 16 millimeter bolt yep all right that's loose and there we have it folks, nice and simple. That's pretty much everything loose bar the four subframe bolts. So next I load the R36 down and got the workbench ready for everything to get transferred over. Well that dropped. Car seems all right. It's out. Okay, so it's the next day. We're gonna have a good look at all of this assembly we've got here on the table and the underside of the Passat. Now, before we get into all of that though, make sure you are subscribed if you are enjoying the video so far. I am trying different things as a channel now. We never used to drop some frames before. But now that we've got the unit, we can obviously level up things. And I've got a lot more planned this year. Right, so the rear end of the R36 is quite cool. It fits perfectly onto this workbench. For reference, that's six feet in length. And the whole reason I even got it in the first place was for this job but yeah the first thing you notice straight off the bat is that there's quite a bit of surface rust on the subframe itself it is strange that they didn't use an aluminium one for the r36 because certain cars did have a rear aluminium subframe i think the a3 3.2s some early mark 5 r32s as well there's a bit of confusion there give it a bit of a poke Suspension is still all kind of attached or shall i say just sitting there because that's what the springs do they're just basically sit on the tension between the lower arm and the body of the vehicle these all look pretty new because they're not flaking dampers are a bit more tatty but most of the times people change the spring because they crack this one looks a bit sweatier than that side so perhaps that one's a bit more past its expiry date still got the brakes attached as well so these are the 310 millimeter vented rear setup as i mentioned in the last video with the caddy but the interesting thing with the passat the b6 is that they have an electronic handbrake which is quite an odd thing for a car of that era and here we can see that brake pipe that i mentioned earlier as well it's running all the way along the top of the subframe which unfortunately has snapped off there just by undoing it i've plugged up this line with a random bolt but it goes around there underneath these trays so we're gonna have to figure that all out we've already seen the wheel a large area you probably get a bit of a better look now that everything's all off a lot of surface rust again which can be basically scrubbed off or we might use a wire brush on the end of a drill nothing terminal i don't think it's definitely in a lot better condition than the various mark 5s i've had especially for a car that's done nearly 200 000 miles i'll say the worst part is probably here on the passenger side with this corner 
And also there's a bit up there where the suspension strut attaches onto, which I'm not a fan of, because it reminds me of an old Subaru where they rusted the strut tower tops. But yeah, that's the R36 underside. Right, so the approach I took for disassembly was mostly random. I started with the suspension first as it looked to be the easiest thing, but in typical fashion, the lower damper bolt was completely seized into the bush. So I left those attached. Next, I moved on to the brakes. The caliper themselves were pretty straightforward, but the access for the bigger M14 carrier bolts was limited. So I moved on to the upper camber arms instead. Okay, you can see the end of a TRW logo there. So maybe they're a genuine item. Either way, I've got brand new ones. My wrist didn't like that. There you go, mate. And we can pull this out now. I mean, if you ever want to see how the four wheel drive system works, watch the drive shaft and also the end of the diff there as I try to get this bolt off. The bolt's not coming off though. <laughs> We put this under some sort of block. That's how you do it, plank of wood. Then it was just a case of undoing whatever was left holding the hub onto the subframe, such as the lower control arm, the anti-robot drop links, and also the drive shafts. Drive shaft loose. This is taking longer than actually taking it off the car. Okie doke. The amount of rust that's just fallen off from whacking it with a sledge. Drop link again. That's a nice feeling. And off it goes. There we are, the anti roll bar is out. All that was left now to free the subframe was the bolts going into the three diff bushes. And you may notice the lower arms are still attached at this point, but that was not due to a lack of trying. I'd been cutting for a good while, but in the end, I just decided to leave it until later when we've got the frame separated. Diff has been separated. I think we're finally there. Okay. Oh, yes. The rewarding bit. Right, so it turns out disassembling all of that was more difficult than taking it off the car. I guess it's all a bit of a learning experience. At least now I know how all of it works, just in case I want a four wheel drive swap something in the future. It is pretty cool seeing all of it just laid out on the floor and the diff is still on the table because I didn't fancy picking that up. It does weigh quite a bit. But yeah, folks, I think what we'll do is we'll end episode two here. I feel like we've covered a fair bit and there's still a lot more to do to this car. So yeah, make sure you stay tuned and you subscribe and all that good stuff. Follow me on Instagram as well to keep up to date in the meantime. If you've been through a similar sort of task with your own car make sure you do drop a comment down below as any advice would be appreciated this is all a first time thing for me i'm definitely looking forward to putting all this back together once it's been refreshed but yeah, i'll stop talking now and i'll see you in the next video